In 2020, it was first reported that the drug Ucrevis could cause colitis, inflammation of the colon, a potentially serious side effect, and this has previously been reported with the drug rituximab, both of which work on B lymphocytes. And this is not an infection of the gastrointestinal tract, which of course can occur with any immunosuppressive drug and is often successfully treated with antibiotics, but this is inflammatory colitis, which may have an immune mechanism. So this video could be relevant to someone with colitis or symptoms of colitis that is not improving spontaneously or with antibiotics. Though I'm a neurologist, not an internist or gastroenterologist, so please talk to your own provider for personal advice. My name is Brandon Bieber. I make videos about multiple sclerosis every Wednesday. I have some links below with videos about rituximab and Ocrevus, but I'll give a brief overview. These are similar medications, both of which bind to the protein CD20 on the surface of B lymphocytes, causing them to break open and die. The typical expected side effects of these medications are infusion reactions, rash, hives, other things during the infusion, and weakening of the immune system that can sometimes lead to infections. This class of drugs does not have a major risk of autoimmune disease that can be seen with other immunosuppressive drugs like Lemtrada or TNF-alpha blockers, so this type of side effect is a surprise. As an example, I'll read a brief case report of someone who developed colitis from Ocrevus. This is a 43-year-old Caucasian woman who had diarrhea and abdominal pain. She had a long history of multiple sclerosis and used a wheelchair due to the condition. She had previously taken Lemtrada, Alemtuzumab, which can cause secondary autoimmune disease, but this is 10 years later, so it's hard to attribute it to that, and she was in a clinical trial. She also took Abagio one year ago, which can cause mild diarrhea, but is not expected to cause colitis, particularly not a year later. But she is currently on Ocrevus and received two doses six months apart. These are her laboratory tests. You can see that her hemoglobin is a little bit elevated, a sign of dehydration. She had a slight elevation of her white blood cells. Most notably, her C-reactive protein CRP was sky high, 187. You can see the normal value is less than five. This is a marker of severe inflammation, and it seems to be present in these more severe cases of drug-induced colitis, at least from my reading, although it is not present in every single case of drug-induced colitis, and it's very nonspecific. It can occur with infections or various other conditions. You can also see the lactate is elevated. This is a sign of poor blood flow to the colon and metabolic demand, and they did tests for various infections, a stool culture, Clostridium difficile, which is a particular bacterial infection, but they were all negative, but of course they gave antibiotics anyway just in case. This is her abdominal x-ray, which shows a so-called thumbprint sign. You can see the blue arrows. It kind of looks like a a thumbprint. And what that is, is these walls of the bowel are very thickened. The darker area is the normal air within the colon. And normally you see more of a tube-like structure with only thin slits of gray. This is her colonoscopy, which is very abnormal. You can see the normal pink colon here. The rest is this severe nodular inflammation. And it was throughout the colon, not just in this one section. They looked for different infections. They took biopsies, but they were negative for cytomegalovirus, CMB, and and various other infections, so they presumed it was drug-related colitis. And they tried to treat her with intravenous hydrocortisone, a steroid, to calm down the inflammation, but unfortunately it didn't work. She got worse, and they had to resort to total colectomy, total removal of the entire colon, leaving only the small intestine. Now, just to be clear, this is very rare. I've never seen this. I don't have a colleague who's ever seen anything like this with either their Ocrevus or Rituximab, but it is potentially possible. You can live without a colon, but you can have loose stools, frequent bowel movements, and sometimes complications of the surgery. And as a result of this and other cases of immune-mediated colitis, this appears on the product label of Ocrevus as shown here, although interestingly, it does not appear on the rituximab product label. They mention gastrointestinal infections, of course, but not specifically immune-mediated colitis. But it can occur with rituximab. And this is a case series of 21 people who develop colitis taking rituximab. Now granted, none of the people in this particular study actually took rituximab for multiple sclerosis, but I presume it's due to the drug itself, not due to the underlying condition. And all of these people did not have an infection. They had what was believed to be immune-mediated colitis. And I thought this would give us a broad sample size and we could learn about the characteristics of this condition. So the reason or indication these people got rituximab, eight had some form of cancer 
cancer, hematologic malignancy. Rituximab is used for various things, including lymphoma, vasculitis, and autoimmune disease of the blood vessels, rheumatoid arthritis, three people, membranous nephropathy, and autoimmune kidney disease. And one person had a bleeding disorder, which is autoimmune idiopathic thrombocytic purpura, or ITP. The symptoms were typical symptoms of colitis, either infectious or otherwise, diarrhea, nausea, weight loss, abdominal pain, fever, sometimes with bloody stools. Really, the clinical symptoms are probably indistinguishable from those caused by an infection. However, the average duration of treatment, that is treatment with rituximab, prior to colitis was for people who had inflammatory bowel disease. So they divided these 21 individuals based on their pathology, based on the colonoscopy results and the biopsy results into inflammatory bowel disease, in other words, ulcerative colitis or Crohn's disease, and microscopic colitis. So the people who ended up having signs of inflammatory bowel disease 25 months passed on average after getting rituximab before getting the side effect. Now, that's 25 months after the onset of the treatment, they may have had ongoing doses. For people who had microscopic colitis, it was only five months. Keep in mind the half-life of rituximab, and Ocrevus has a very similar half-life, is only around three weeks. So after five months, the drug is long gone. So is this a type four hypersensitivity, an allergic reaction to the drug itself? No but it's a delayed side effect probably related to the effect on the B lymphocytes themselves, we believe. So the drug is gone. It's a delayed complication of the drug, both for rituximab and Ocrevus. The prognosis in this particular article seemed to be fairly good, 85.7% improved completely over between two weeks or six months, so it could last for a while, and they didn't really mention serious complications like requiring a colectomy. This slide just shows the characteristics of people who got colitis. So on the left, inflammatory bowel disease, 12 people. On the right, microscopic colitis, 9 people. You can see the average age in people with inflammatory bowel disease was 52.5 versus 63.5 in microscopic colitis. I don't know if that's significant. Obviously, the average age of diagnosis of people with multiple sclerosis is 30, but this probably just reflects the demographics of people getting the drug rituximab for these various diseases. Most people were female but most autoimmune diseases are in females. Almost everyone was white, probably just based on where they did this particular study. Nothing really sticks out in terms of tobacco use, NSAID use. A lot of people, over 50% overall, were taking steroids, and so that really calls into the question the idea of using steroids to treat this condition. And you can see that not very many, just a single person, had a family history of inflammatory bowel disease. And when they made a final diagnosis based on biopsy or just colonoscopy, nine had microscopic colitis, five had ulcerative colitis, seven had Crohn's disease. What's reported with people getting ocrevus and developing immune-mediated colitis is that pathology often looks like ulcerative colitis or Crohn's disease. I should also note that various other drugs could potentially cause drug-related colitis. Some examples include Yervoy and Copictra, which are totally different from B-cell depleters, both used to treat different forms of cancer. Avastin, a drug which blocks vascular endothelial growth factor, so blocks the blood flow to cancer could cause this syndrome, and anti-tumor necrosis factor alpha drugs such as Humira used to treat psoriasis and other autoimmune diseases could cause drug-related colitis, probably a much greater likelihood than Ocrevus or Rituximab. Now, it's very difficult to answer the question why Ocrevus and Rituximab cause drug-related colitis. If anything, I would think these drugs would prevent colitis. They're used to treat various autoimmune diseases. In fact, the drug Casim used to treat multiple sclerosis is actually used to treat inflammatory bowel disease. So how could these drugs actually cause autoimmune bowel disease? It just doesn't make any sense. By the way, I should note I was unable to find any case reports of people with MS taking Casimpta or the new drug Briumvi causing drug-related colitis. Of course, Briumvi is brand new, but I presume it could be possible with those other drugs as well. Now, people have speculated about possible possible mechanism of action of immune-mediated colitis, primarily based on animal studies. They believe that depletion of the B cells within the mucosa of the gastrointestinal tract could cause some kind of dysregulation of the immune system. And it's well known that autoimmune disease may have something to do with activation of a certain type of helper T cell or CD4-positive T cell driving a 
T helper cell type 1 response, and there's sort of an imbalance between the Th1 pathway and the, and the Th2 pathway. Th2 type CD4 positive T cells secrete interleukin 10, which is involved in regulation of the immune system. And something about depletion of the B cells, even though they don't directly create interleukin 10, may somehow suppress its production, increasing a T helper cell type 1 response, driving inflammation. There's also a reduction of immunoglobin A and the mucosa, which also increases the risk of infections. And of course, it's possible that this is caused by some kind of indolent infection that simply has not yet been discovered. And similar changes, low IL-10, low immunoglobin A, has been reported in other diseases such as ulcerative colitis as well. So to summarize, drug-induced colitis is a rare but potentially serious side effect of Ocrevus and Rituximab. It's extremely rare. I do not believe I've ever seen this in any of my own patients, and I believe that gastrointestinal infection just due to immunosuppression is likely much more common, but it's important to know about this just in case you have chronic symptoms of colitis and it's not improving with antibiotics. Just keep in the back of your mind, it could be something else. Of course, talk to your own provider. In severe cases, ESR, erythrocyte sedimentation rate, and CRP, C-reactive protein markers of inflammation of the blood, can be very elevated, but they could also be normal in milder cases. Sometimes this condition can be severe and even require bowel surgery, we don't know how it could be treated. In theory, if it's immune-mediated, it could be treated with immunosuppressants such as steroids. But as I mentioned, it can occur in people who are already receiving steroids. So I'm somewhat skeptical of that treatment. I'd be interested to know, have you had this condition? Have you had gastrointestinal symptoms in general? Did they go away when you stopped the drug? Do you have any other questions or suggestions for future videos?